In 1974, and bear with me here, there were 100,000 programmers in the world. Fast forward to 2014, and there were 14.5 million estimated developers, which means that the number of developers effectively doubled every five years. If the number of programmers doubles every five years, that means that at any given time, half of the programmers in the world have less than five years experience, which means if you've been working in an industry longer than half the people doing the job, you are not a junior. Job ads looking for junior candidates with five or more years of experience are frankly out of touch. We've all seen these, right? Job ads asking for six years experience with a library that's only been out for two. Our friend of Scrimba, Jermaine Jupiter, shared an example recently on Twitter too. These are bad, but they are outliers. They're, they're memes basically at this point, or at least I hope so. What's actually more bewildering, disappointing, and downright soul-crushing at times is this idea that you need experience to get work experience. But it is just an idea. It's not true. And in this video, I'm going to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Hey, my name is Alex and I'm the host of the Scrimba podcast, where I interview newly hired developers as well as more experienced programmers about their advice on learning to code and getting your first developer job. Experience inflation is something that comes up all too often, and it refers to junior, graduate, or other entry-level jobs requiring an increasing number of years of experience from applicants. At one point, entry-level probably truly did mean entry-level, that is a job designed for people with no experience to catapult their career. But over time, the threshold has increased to one year, then two years, and now most typically, I think, two to three years of experience for a junior level role. It can be really frustrating and even demotivating because by its very literal name, entry level, this is meant to be your opportunity to enter the job force and start your career. But no. I think it's actually become a bit of a misnomer, and in this video I'm going to explain a bit more behind the reasoning why companies are looking for two to three years of experience, and how you can counterbalance that requirement even if you don't quite meet the threshold. Experience is not necessarily a fair measure of someone's ability, but relevance and recent experience certainly doesn't hurt. A lot of companies use this data point because it's a convenient way to filter and identify the top candidates for a role. They're okay doing this because it's so convenient, even though it will mean that they miss out on some awesome candidates like you potentially. And it's for that very reason, for better or for worse, it's up to you to make sure that you stand out in this process. Another reason is short-term cost efficiency. Said another way, the more experience someone has, the quicker they can get to work and contribute to the business and its bottom line. Everyone, every developer needs some time to ramp up and meet the team, learn the projects and the requirements and get familiar with the structure of the projects. This is called ramp up time and it's unavoidable. But if you have no professional experience, you might need even more time to learn what's expected from you and how to work best in the team. Aside from taking a little bit more time and maybe costing the company a little bit more money in the short term than they would otherwise have to spend, this also represents a potential risk as there's no real guarantee that that new developer will find their feet and become a positive contributor. They might realize it's not for them or something like that, and this could obviously be a burden for the company. With all that said, if this sounds at all discouraging, I absolutely promise you it's because you haven't realized your potential yet. This is a very short-term mindset that can be useful at an agency where they are literally hiring out developers to add features. But many, especially the best teams, they will invest in their developers early on. And that's exactly the opportunity you should try and find. I felt it quite important to outline some of the mindset behind this job requirement, as it will help you navigate this since every situation is different. But no matter what, the thing I want you to remember above all else is that the job description in most cases is the hiring manager's wish list. It's not an absolute checklist, it's not an absolute hard and fast set of rules, there is some wiggle room there. I would even go as far to say that if you match as much as 80% of the job requirements, you should go ahead and apply. I mean, what's the worst they're going to do? Ghost you and completely ruin your self-confidence? This is a genuine concern. 
I just make light of the situation because it is probably something you should try and wrap your head around. Things at this stage especially should be considered very impersonal and almost a numbers game. If someone rejects you or treats you badly later on, that's much more likely a reflection of them than it is of you and your ability as well. Moving on, I want to remind you that there is absolutely no science behind the years of experience measurements. And frankly, it's not the years that matter so much as the experience within those years. I don't think a year where someone lives and breathes code, knocks out projects and finishes them with gumption is the same as a year where someone has dabbled with some coding challenges and courses. It's just not the same thing. Employers know this. They know that they will have people applying with 12 years experience, but they took a sabbatical or they did the same year 12 years in a row. They weren't learning anything new. And that's why employers are also going to look at your resume and portfolio to support that number. But that's actually a good thing for you as it presents an opportunity to stand out regardless, especially if you're hardworking and doing the right things like building projects to demonstrate your ability and commitment to coding. Remember all those reasons I listed why employers are looking for a certain number of years of experience? Well, you can do things to stand out even if you have less years of experience. Things like contributing to open source, writing a short ebook, blogging, YouTube, launching an app in an app store or marketplace, doing something with meetups, managing or contributing to a coding newsletter, or even earning reputation within a community. These are the sorts of things that can make up for a lack of experience in the short term. Remember, I also explained how an employer might be looking for some reassurance that you can hit the ground running and understand how teams collaborate on software, typically using Git, by the way. This idea of experience inflation is particularly prevalent among IT workers and software development because so many things have a low barrier to entry, right? You just need a computer and an internet connection. There's no barrier to entry to you gaining some professional experience on Upwork. There's no barrier to entry to you gaining very real world like experience on GitHub, for instance, by participating in feature discussions and GitHub pull requests and issues and things like that. If it's not obvious already, I'm suggesting that you do these kind of things to build your actual experience and then demonstrate to the employer that even though surely, yes, you have some things to learn, you've started laying the foundation already. This is not only a great sign of your attitude and your determination to learn and to understand how to work in a team, you know, it's worth investing in you basically, uh, but you'll also have developed those specific skills and they will help. They will come in handy for sure. Remember, I also mentioned that employers might be looking for some reassurance that you can hit the ground running and that you understand how software is built in a team. Maybe you don't have any professional experience yet, but you could start dabbling with freelancing on Upwork or contributing to open source projects on GitHub. That's very real world like, especially if you're getting involved with the feature discussions and the pull request discussions as well. If you've worked in a different industry doing a different job, it could even be a muck job for all anybody else cares there's always transferable experience. If you were friends of house and spoke to customers, that proves you're not stuck in your shell. If you've worked a job for a while, that shows that you can commit and that you're probably dependable. These are quite universal examples. They could apply to a few different types of jobs. But say you were a teacher, for example, you could probably reason that you're a good question asker or a good explainer, or maybe someone who could be good at writing documentation and empathizing with how a student or an end user would understand that documentation. If you're a teacher, you could strategically apply to edutech companies where maybe you don't have the hardest coding skills, right? But you have a lot of understanding about the industry, domain knowledge and empathy with the end user, be that teachers or students. This is just one example, but you get the idea. Don't sleep on your opportunities to gain experience before you get the job and don't sleep on your past experience either as more of it is relatable than frankly most people realize. Finally, you're going to want to show a dollop of potential. There are definitely true entry-level jobs out there. Don't be deterred if you haven't found one yet. They definitely do exist. They're just a bit rarer. If you are broadening your horizons, as many are, by skirting that line between years of experience and professional experience and being a self-taught developer, then it really serves you to highlight to the employer your potential and get them to invest in your development. Because even though in the short term, they will have to invest a little bit in getting you started a bit more than they otherwise would. You could be a very good return on investment, basically, if you realize your potential. It's not the most satisfying answer, but the way you do that at this stage, we're talking about 
about applying for jobs, remember, is to kind of do all the things I've spoken about already. You will need enthusiasm, the ability to learn quickly, the desire to learn things, and ideally a sort of exhaust trail of projects and content you've created over the course of a few months, because those actions are going to support your words. Well, I hope this video has shed some light as to why so many entry-level jobs aren't really entry-level. It's mostly due to this idea of experience inflation. The term entry level is a bit of a misnomer. I know on LinkedIn it's an option we see a lot, even though when you read the job description, it describes something that is clearly not entry level. And I hope as well that you have some ideas about how to kind of combat these very high requirements. Basically, if you don't meet all of the requirements, don't let that deter you. There's definitely some wiggle room, especially for very promising candidates with strong projects, a uh, history of learning, and, and maybe a portfolio and solid resume and stuff like that don't forget to parlay your previous experience if you have some as well it often seems quite irrelevant but it could be considered part of your professional experience right as you've developed soft skills demonstrated commitment and things like that i've been alex Booker. thank you so much for watching say you do get an interview here's a video of five job interview red flags you should probably watch out for and since you made it this far in the video, you should consider subscribing to the Scrimba YouTube channel as well as following me on Twitter. There are links in the description. See you next time.